I am all in favor of inviting lost people to come to church to hear the preaching of the gospel. Now that having been said, we must keep in mind that church is not for lost people. Uh, there's a pastor, quote unquote pastor, in the United States named Stephen Furtick. He's pastor of Elevation Church. And there's a video of him on YouTube where he says, basically he says, uh, Elevation Church, if you're a Christian, Elevation Church is not for you. <laughs> he says, we have a church for the unchurched. I don't even know what that means. I mean, a church by definition is the saved. That's what ecclesia means, the called out ones. So, you know, when you say you have a church for the unchurched, no, you don't. You might have a, some kind of social club, but you don't have a church. The prophet Samuel comes to anoint the king of Israel. He knew that it was one of Jesse's sons. Nobody even thought about David in that moment. He was just a sheep tender, the youngest one. Surely it can't be David. Oh, yeah, it's David. Because Jesus has the habit of calling out the one that everybody else has overlooked. I want Elevation Church to be a church for the overlooked, for the unloved. Not for us to have as many different varieties of Bible studies. We got Beth Moore and Kay Arthur and Joyce Meyer. No. You know what we got? We got Jesus. We preach him. We preach so that people can come to faith in Christ, and we want them to get in a small group and serve so that other people can meet Christ. If you know Jesus, I am sorry to break it to you. This church is not for you. Yeah, but I just gave my life to Christ last week at Elevation. Last week was the last week that Elevation Church existed for you. You're in the army now. We do one thing. We preach Jesus so people far from God can know Jesus. And then we train them up so that others can know Jesus. It's called kingdom multiplication. It's what Elevation Church is all about. And over 500 people have given their lives to Jesus for the first time in this church in the last five months. That's over a hundred per month. If that doesn't get you excited and you need the doctrines of grace as defined by John Calvin to excite you, you in the wrong church. Let me get a phone book. There are 720 churches in Charlotte. I'm sure we can find one where you can stuff your face until you're so obese spiritually that you can't even move. This is a church that wants to get you on the field, playing the game, changing lives, looking for an opportunity to impact. It's what we're all about. We're focused like a laser. We're not perfect, but we know what we came to do. Luke 19.10, seek and save that which is lost. It's the mission of Jesus. It's the mission of Elevation Church. And may we never... Become a church of front row spectators who judge the deeds being done more than we care about the people that Jesus wants to save. There are too many people in this city that don't know Christ and they're moving here every day. This city is only increasing in influence. For me to sit around and argue with you about stupid stuff, for me to argue with you about when Jesus is coming back, when he personally sat out of his mouth and it's recorded in the Bible that no man knows the day or the hour. Go read Left Behind. I don't have time to have that argument with you. Go read it. It's fiction. It's not true, but read it. I, I hit five of you. <laughs> five people at our central campus thought that was funny. <clears throat> well, why y'all sitting down? I didn't give you that permission yet. If you were standing, you can remain standing in reverence and respect for the word of Almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth. You've been so energetic all night, and I'd ask you to keep that energy as kind of really cool thing when you get to preach at Lakewood after Israel Houghton and so please don't ruin it for me by like losing your energy it would be great if we could make this everything I had dreamed it would be hey no really you may be seated and thank you worship team thank you so much and uh, I did want to take a moment and just honor uh, Pastor Joel and Victoria again to say thank you for letting me stand here and preach yeah, I didn't tell you this, but I, I actually came out here like one year into our church, maybe a year and a half into our church, and I guess it was like a round table thing that they had set up for pastors. I got to sneak up here and make a little video for our church, and it was just getting started, and I made a video of this place and talked to our church and said, if God can do it there, what could he do in our city? And I wanted to just report to you. You know, I remember our church cheering for that, but it was kind of hard to imagine. And since that time, we've seen 
like over 20,000 people come to Christ in the church. But I want to thank you for inspiring that vision for us. And um, it's pretty cool what you help us imagine. So thanks. You kind of blow all of our minds and then we dream bigger for God. You were only one click away from the TD Jakes app to be reminded that your sermon was just okay. You got to time it carefully when you watch him on Monday. It'll make you suicidal. But, uh, and that's his announcements. His announcements are better than your sermon. Absolutely. But, uh, today I wanted to give a different title and I really prayed about this. I want to say something that would express who he is. And I want to call him today, Bishop Thomas Ambidextrous Jakes. I don't know if anybody's ever called you that before. But just for today, we thank God for Bishop Thomas, not Dexter, Ambidextrous Jakes. Because Ambidextrous means you can use both hands equally well. And God has given you a bishop and a pastor who can beat the devil with either hand. Let me explain. He can beat him in the house of God and he can beat him in Hollywood. Come on, somebody. Everybody shout and. See, I love him because he doesn't put an or where God put an and. He's ambidextrous, both hands. He can beat him with a message, and he can beat the devil with a movie. Everybody say, and. Yeah. He can beat him as a premier preacher, and he can beat him as an executive producer. Everybody say, and. Yeah. Both hands. He'll beat the devil with the left hand, the right hand, whatever. I love him. He can beat him with a sermon. He can beat him with a talk show. He can beat him with a book. He can beat him in a boardroom. Come on, somebody. He's Bishop Thomas Ambidextrous Jakes, the equalizer. Make some noise for Bishop Jakes, the greatest, the greatest. Woo! And hey, I didn't, I didn't just want to talk about, man, people come and say you feel like family, but somebody says that they ought to show up and reciprocate something. So I saw them bring out the wheelbarrow. I'm glad they did. I've been watching that wheelbarrow online now. So I, I brought a casserole to the Sunday before Thanksgiving meal. I brought, a, I brought a little gift. I'm 35 years old, and I wanted to walk this down to the wheelbarrow myself. This is a, uh, where's the wheelbarrow? You better bring that wheelbarrow back out here. Put this check in the, yeah, run, man, run reckless. Run reckless with the wheelbarrow. And we wanted to present this check to what you're doing and the steel that's going up for $35,000 to honor the work of God in this ministry today. Thank you. So when I say I feel like family, I mean it. And that's like a do-